Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Secretary, welcome. I, I, I want to share with you a, a story and return to the Middle East. In, in 1979, when I was a young college student, I lived for a time in, in Egypt, and it was the year of the peace accords between Israel and Egypt, and there was a celebratory atmosphere of this newfound relationship with America. But I, was, uh, I lived for a time in a remote oasis area with farmers in the western desert. And one of the farmers, uh, English was very limited, so you did the best you could, but one of the farmers wanted to show me something. And he took me to one of his neighbors, and he grabbed his neighbor's hand, and he took his wrist, and he bowed and placed his neighbor's wrist right on his face. His neighbor was a Coptic Christian, and he was a Muslim. And his neighbor had the tattoo of Christianity, which is common among Copts, uh, on his wrist. He was trying to tell me a couple of things. One, that they were brothers, that they were friends, and also that I was welcome there in that village. This story is very hard to reconcile with what is happening today, particularly with uh, the emergence of ISIL and this 8th century barbarism with 21st century weapons that is not only assaulting life, but it's assaulting this sacred space of, of human dignity, this right, this value of being able to hold reasonably held beliefs and exercise them in religious tradition. So once ISIL is hopefully contained, degraded, and eliminated, we still live with the difficult problem of assuring a religious pluralism and that the ancient peoples who have been there, who have every much as right to be there, as anyone else, Christians, Yazidis, other religious minorities, as well as innocent Muslim people who are being victimized by this. Uh, a new day should shine forth whereby this right of conscience and religious freedom should be respected. In this regard, in the State Department, I have a suggestion and a plea for you. You have an ambassador for international religious freedom, but I understand that his role is not as perhaps robust as it could be in reporting directly to you. This assault by ISIL is not only an assault on human dignity and life, it's an assault on civilization itself. So again, once it's contained, this ideal of bringing forth a new and, 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 and robust understanding of protecting the rights and dignities of all persons, no matter their religious faith. Middle Eastern Christianity is shattered and someone's going to have to pick up the pieces here. If we have time, I'd like to return to the question of how the Kurds can help in this regard, because they've been, de been doing a very significant heavy lift in protecting that population as well as the Yazidis. But if you'd care to comment on the uh, ambassador for religious freedom and the position that they have in the State Department. Well, Rabbi Saperstein is uh, as distinguished an advocate as there is, and uh, he has access to me anytime. I mean, I have enormous respect for him. He knows that. I worked very hard to get him to be able to come in and take this job on. And the last thing he's going to suffer for is lack of access to me, I assure you. Uh, this is a huge priority within the State Department. I also appointed the first faith-based uh, uh, liaison office with uh, Sean Casey filling that role. We're deeply involved in trying to pull interfaith efforts together in order to uh, appropriately stand up for religious freedom, but also to harness the uh, full measure of force that comes from leaders within various religions to start speaking out about the true Islam, about interfaith uh, abilities and needs and so forth. So uh, I'm very excited about it. I think we could not have gotten, we, the position has existed under prior administrations. But I think everybody would agree that uh, Rabbi Saperstein is uh, hugely uh, appropriate to this moment, and I expect nothing but, uh, you know, good results. Well, I agree. I hear you saying, I'm interpreting your words, is that you have elevated and intensified the positioning of this ambassador within the dynamics of the department. And I think he, he as well as whoever comes along, needs to have a seat at the table as the rebuilding begins in the Middle East so that not only stability takes place, but the very basis for that stability of respect for human dignity and rights as expressed in religious freedom is right there next to everything else. Defense considerations, economic considerations, uh, human dignity considerations.
Well, it's at the center of the struggle we're involved in. Yes. And uh, we all need to uh, <clears throat> pay attention to that. Mr. Thank Stewart. You.